This video has been sponsored by Squarespace. Some of the biggest Warhammer content creators in the world have never even played a game of it. What hope does anybody else have? Nobody is playing Warhammer. How do I know this? Well, last week I asked a simple question. For those who collect, build, paint only Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, Kill Team Necromunda, Horus Heresy, do you ever play the games? And the answers totally blew my mind and made me totally rethink everything. So here's the deal. Traditionally, I always expected that the miniature wargaming hobby, the Warhammer experience, was pretty simple. I go to the store, I buy the miniatures, I build the miniatures, I paint the miniatures, I play with the miniatures. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy. Look ma, I'm a wargamer. From the very beginning, that's what I was taught. That's how I first started. The goal was always to get the minis on the table and play with them. Whether that's in a game store or just on a kitchen table. And I did. In fact, my first experience in this hobby was getting my ass kicked repeatedly by a friend who played an all melee orc list on a two by two table. Going all infantry imperial guard with a focus on heavy weapon teams, maybe not my brightest move. Didn't work out for me. I lost a lot of games. But now I've realized that's totally wrong. That's not the reality for a lot of other hobbyists. And to show what I mean, here is a seemingly innocuous comment from YouTube sensation Dina Heil. I try and collect and paint all the army slash warbands as if I will one day play the games, but I honestly still haven't had an opportunity to play since I started painting Warhammer stuff back in 2019. 2019! Dina has been building and painting since 2019! That's three years ago! She's created a successful YouTube video business painting Warhammer miniatures in colors that I didn't even know existed, and yet she has still not gotten miniatures on the table! Hey, you don't need to just pick on me. I'm sure there's lots of other people out there who haven't got a chance to play Warhammer in the last few years. Okay, okay, enough picking on Dina. She wasn't alone. In fact, there were tons of comments saying very similar things. This commenter hasn't played a war game since 1998 and still collects the minis. This commenter has never played a game, yet they still own 4,000 points of Warhammer. This commenter has five armies and has played three games. They have played less games than armies that they own. And similar things show up again and again and again. People are buying miniatures. They're building them. They're list building, dreaming up strategies, and keeping up with lore and rules for their favorite games. And then they're sitting on it, never to actually play a game. Isn't that interesting? In fact, at the time of recording, almost half of all hobbyists who build and paint Warhammer models have never played a single Warhammer game. And of the 53% who claim to have played a game, many of them have come to the comments to explain that they've either played a single demo game or a solo game with themselves, or just they want to play. So they answered yes to the survey. Not quite what the survey was asking, but okay, you do you. So why then? Why have so few people, ostensibly Warhammer fans, played a Warhammer game? After all, it is a war game, right? This is a hobby that includes miniatures, sure, but they're miniatures with an intended purpose. Because the purpose of a miniature is to be played with, just like how the purpose of a website is to be seen. And if you're going to be seen, then you're going to want to look your best, which is why I'm pleased to say that today's video has been sponsored by Squarespace, the elegant nightgown of website construction. I love my horror. I love my spooks. I have a spooky horror sci-fi project in the works and I needed a website, a platform, and a mood board for that project. Luckily for me, Squarespace can do all of that and more. Squarespace is a platform that will enable anyone, regardless of technical proficiency or confidence with internet tools, to create a beautiful, striking website in no time at all. They provide tons of templates, assets, and pictures to help beautify your site and make it easy to get your text 
looking pretty. They provide an image block system that make it extra easy to get your website looking great. I find it really easy to use. You can see my website came out looking particularly dark and moody, exactly how I wanted. It's a fantastic tool. But don't just take my word for it. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash discourse miniatures to see if 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. There's a link in the description of this video. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Yes, so being played with miniatures. Why so few folk doing so? Well, when you read the comments of my latest poll, there's a lot of different reasons. Some folk don't have anyone to play with. Some can't keep up with the meta. People can't find time to play. Lots of people just enjoy building and painting models. And I was ready to get my wig on, get my gavel out, and begin hammering down in judgment of my fellow hobbyists, starting with that menace Dina Hile. Hey. Before I realized I'm the same, because yes, I am a non-wargaming wargamer. I am a hobbyist that doesn't play with their miniatures. Here's my Mythic Americas, all two starter sets worth. I haven't played a single game of this yet. Here's my Bolt Action, zero play. Here's my Stargrave and Frostgrave, a lot of books and models, and I haven't got any of them done. And here's my... Um, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm not really quite sure what these are. I just saw them in a store and they looked like they had come from the 70s, so I, I had to have them. These are collections that I own. They're collections that I have, and I intend to play with these, but I haven't yet. And I probably won't anytime soon, but I bought them. I built many of them almost a year ago now, and some of them a little longer. I painted some of them, and now I sit on them like a mother hen waiting for her egg to... I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a farmer. Is, is it Hatch? Is it, it, how, how do they how do they go from the, the chick to what we eat? The, the, the yolk? How, how does that happen? Nature's weird. And if it wasn't for the fact that these models have a playable aspect to them, I probably wouldn't even have bought them. See, I don't quite get Funko Pops. I don't get Joy Toy. I don't even really get just collecting miniatures. I get wanting to own miniatures, and I get that deep, hungering, bottomless pit of despair when I see miniatures that I must have, and it takes every fiber of my being and every neuron in my brain to resist purchasing them. But every single miniature that I own, every single one that I buy, every single miniature that I paint, even these weird 70s skill miniatures, I intend on playing with them. But the question is, the question I ask myself now, having read Dinner's haunting comment, will I? Will I play with all of my miniatures? I mean, I'd, I'd love to think so, but if I'm honest with myself, maybe not, probably not. I have too many minis. Personally, I'm a little bit of a hoarder, so I find it hard to part with things. I grew up in a poor household. I came from a pretty rough side of town, the wrong side of the railway tracks. In fact, we don't even have railway tracks. They run through the nicer, poor areas. So for me, there's an emotional element to collecting things. These material objects, these little miniature men, and it feels intrinsically wrong to just collect them for no good reason. So maybe this idea that I'm going to play with every single one of my miniatures, that I need them for war games. Maybe that's just a story I'm telling myself to ease my psychic trauma. I look at my collection and I say to myself, I will play with these miniatures. And then I leave them on the shelf where they will accumulate dust, never to be played with. But yet, I still hope to play with them all. On this comment thread, it tells me that I'm not alone in feeling like this and telling this story about myself. In fact, it seems to be pretty endemic to the hobby. And perhaps unsurprisingly, I think that this feeling has been weaponized by Games Workshop 
to some extent. In fact, I would say that GW are the masters at helping us spin this little tale about ourselves and the hobby. Because when you think about it, let's take Warhammer 40k as the iconic games workshop game because well, it is. It's the biggest, most popular one. I think it's not controversial to say that Warhammer 40k is a so-so war game. It's pretty convoluted. It has niche gameplay mechanics. Its pacing is stilted and awkward, and it's hard to get onto the table. All these things should, in theory, be a death sentence for a war game. And if we look back at what our commenter said, making it easy to get a game onto the table is really important to them. They would love to get games in. People mostly want to play the games that they collect for, even if they don't end up doing so. So hi, hi is Warhammer 40k the biggest war game in the world? <clears throat> Well, partially, I think it's because Warhammer 40k, as a game, is fun to think about. Hobbyists love the idea of playing it. There's so much noodly stuff to get lost in. Army lists, codices, sub-factions, stratagems, army-wide rules, weapons lists, objectives, gameplay modes, crusade modes. It's a complicated game with tons and tons of data. You can pour over the content of 40k for weeks and only have a cursory understanding of a single faction. And that's just the gameplay mechanics. That's before we get to the roleplay elements of world building, crafting the army, building a custom chapter, creating details of your army in pants games. All of this contained within the sandbox of this very strong, popular IP and setting. This is without a doubt where Games Workshop excels. Though there are a few other companies that come close, I don't think that anyone quite does this as well as Games Workshop. In fact, this is really what they owe much of their success to in my opinion. And it's why many war games don't quite scratch the same itch for me. And I suspect it's the same for many other hobbyists too. Grimdark Future is really fun. It's funner than Warhammer 40k. It's easier to play. It's easier to convince others to play. But it's not as fun to think about or to build lists for. There's just not as much to get your hooks into. And Games Workshop take advantage of this. They've monetized this element of their games. They sell codices, big rule books. They sell setting supplements. And then, almost by accident, this setting that they created to get hobbyists salivating over their war games, whether those hobbyists ended up ever playing the games or not, sort of grew to be bigger than the games. And now we have more people watching lore YouTube videos than have ever bought a model. And personally, I think Games Workshop were right when they said that they're a miniatures first company all those years ago. In fact, I think that they still think that they are. They just don't say it out loud anymore. I think they've realized that telling this story that Warhammer is primarily a game with miniatures attached helps to sell those miniatures, whether or not anyone ever ends up playing the game at all. There are many people who will still never get their army on the table, but will buy every single codex, every single rulebook, every single supplement. In fact, these newfangled army boxes, or the box sets that get released for Warcry or Kill Team, allows GW to put out box sets filled with models, terrain, and yes, rules to play with. And yet, for a lot of people buying those extremely expensive boxes, all they're buying is the ghost of a game. They're buying into an aspiration. These are aspirational purchases. An intention to play, but never a reality. Probably many aren't even built or painted. I'm not sure if anyone really wants just miniatures for miniature sick. If they did, I think busts would be a lot more popular. But then again, you do have those gunpla transformer things. People build those without any game attached. So I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. What do you guys think? 
And you know, all of this is the reason why I think that the product in this video is Games Workshop's weirdest ever made, even if I think that it's also one of their best. And also, I think it's kind of a scam. You want to know more about that? Check out the video. And a huge thanks to Sonic Bread and to all my patrons. Go check out my Patreon for some special first impressions content, exclusive live streams, and ad-free videos. And I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.